So now, how about a woman? She had an issue of blood. Mark chapter 5. Had that issue of blood 12 years. Nothing better, but rather grew worse. She kept going to physicians every one every time. She got worse and worse. But she heard about Jesus. What do you think she heard? She heard she, he was healing. It didn't make any difference whether it's blind eyes or leprosy. It seemed like when Jesus touched him, something happened. And here's what she said. She said, if I can just touch his clothes, I shall be whole. He said, if I can just touch his clothes, I shall be whole. Now, if you look in the Amplified Translation, it says, she continued to say. Why? Because faith cometh how? By hearing. See, and your voice is the best faith builder that you have. And if you say it enough, you'll start believing it. And this woman said it enough until out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. And now she's full of faith. And the Bob, I just see her now getting her Sunday go to meeting hat, putting it on her head, getting her dress on, saying, I'm going to see the man of God. She got out of that house. The Bible says people were crowding all around Jesus and she pressed her way. She began to push him back out of the way because that's what faith does. Faith won't be, faith can't be stopped. And so she pushed him out and she touched his clothes. And when she touched, virtue flowed. That power flowed and drove that sickness out of her body. The Bible says she knew in her body that she was healed. And he said this, who touched me? They said, wait a minute, master. All these people are touching you. He said, no, 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 no. Somebody got something. You see what I'm saying? A lot of people can be in a service, but how many got faith to receive in that service? And I'm saying the best times that I have in preaching is when I got a bunch of people that are hungry for the word of God. Man, they hungry to want to do something for Jesus. Let me in, coach. Let me come on in there. Praise God, it's my time. I'm telling you, you get in a place like that, you won't have to get a sermon ready. They'll pull a sermon out of you. So what am I saying to you now? I'm saying that that anointing is on you. That anointing is on me to preach to you. That anointing is on me to give you the word that will build the faith that you can activate the anointing in your own life. So while I'm just saying this, I'm saying that it's your time. I'm saying I don't care what your profession is. I'm here to tell you right now that you've been anointed for it. This time has gone off, but it's not saying anything. <laughs> I'm going to trade this, this phone in for the next damn letter. All right. But what I'm saying here, I want to start closing out this. I want to say this, that you are anointed. Do you believe that? In this book, he said, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Say me too. Me too. That's a big movement now. Me too. You all right? So get your anointing and, and watch this. The more you use it, the more it builds up. The more powerful it gets. So I'm saying to you, this anointing that's on you, don't try to feel anything. Understand that the same anointing that was on Jesus is now on you. Why? Because you're going to continue the work he did. Now, this anointing just doesn't work in those kind of miracles, but how about a miracle at your business? How about a miracle in your law firm? How about a miracle as a bricklayer? How about a miracle in whatever assignment you got? Now, what is that going to do? That anointing is going to raise you up. It's going to elevate you. So it's time for elevation. I said it's time for promotion. I said it's time for you to be 10 times better than everybody around you. So I came to tell you, you are about to be promoted. I came to tell you, that this is going to be your finest season. Yeah. That whatever's been stolen from you is about to be restored. Yeah. I'm saying you right now in this group, we're going to see some of the richest people in this city. Yeah. Do you believe that? Yeah. See, you can't try to feel it. 
You just be led by the Holy Ghost and he's going to have you step out on it. Amen. Say amen to that. Amen. I want to close with this story. I was coming to do a funeral. Uh, and uh, on the south side of Chicago. And, uh, oh, I want to tell you one more thing, too. No, I'll leave it. But on the south side of Chicago, and uh, and this, uh, I went to do the funeral, and the guys at the funeral home said, oh, uh, Pastor Winston, you're here early. I said, am I? He said, yeah, the funeral's not supposed to start till so-and-so. I said, oh, my goodness. I said, okay. I said, uh, all right, now, can I get a cup of tea or something? Uh, is there a McDonald's or something that I could just get a cup of tea? I said, yeah, there's one about two blocks down. You can, uh, uh, we'll take you down there to, to get get one. I said, no, no, no. It's a beautiful day. I'll just walk. And they said, oh, okay. So I walked, and as I was going down, I now arrived at the McDonald's. I had to pass through the McDonald's parking lot. And as I passed through the parking lot, a voice rang out from a car that was parked. Here's what he said. There's the man of God. I said, wow. <laughs> what in the world is that? So I went on in the McDonald's, getting in line to get me a cup of tea, and the door swung open. There's a man of God. I knew it was my day. I said, oh, Lord Jesus. So she had probably seen me on television and so forth, but what she recognized is that I was anointed. I'm not bragging. What she recognized, that I was anointed. And she said, you know, I woke up this morning. Now everybody's listening to this lady. I woke up this morning and something said, this is your day. I said, Lord, have mercy. Now, she's calling all the attention here. And she started making her way to me. She had a, a cane, a crutch, and she was, you know, couldn't walk well. She was kind of heavy set lady. And she was making her way to me. There is the man of God. I knew it was my day. I said, now, this lady wants me to lay hands on her. And I'm going to really lay hands on her, too. I'm going I'm to lay hands on this one. So she got close enough to me. I said, in the name of Jesus, be healed. Just like that, man, I'm telling you, that lady went back, the cane flew up in the air, that lady went back, and it, I told you it was my day. I told you it was. See, this is your day. You got to claim this is your day. I said, you got to claim this is your day. I said, you'll never be broke another day in your life. I said, this is my day. Come on, come on. Whatever sickness there is, that thing's got to get up off your body right now. Because this is your day. Come on now. Whatever door's been closed for you, they're now opening. Because this is your day. One more verse. Romans 8. 11, and here's what he says. If the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Now, What's happening here?
This is the Apostle Paul. Now, this is the Apostle Paul because Paul made a statement over in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, that you are going to be preserved spirit, soul, and body. Spirit, soul, and body. Let me just get this. Hold, hold on just a minute. The reason why I'm telling you this, I'm going to tell you in a minute, is because God has work for you to do. I said God has work for you to do. And he says here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 23, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to see this. Watch this, because I'm going pretty far when I'm going to say this, but just track me. It's in the Bible. Over in Isaiah 52, it says here in verse 14, as many as were astonished at thee, his visage was so marred more than any man. Another translation says this, he was beyond that of any, he, uh, uh, he, uh, uh, NIV says, beyond that of any human, meaning that he had such disfigured, he was so disfigured, you couldn't tell he was a man. This is describing Jesus on the cross. Yes. Say amen. amen. Now, this is describing Jesus on the cross, and he was so dis disfigured, you couldn't tell he was a man. Now, that's not the cross that I've seen. The cross that I've seen, you could see Jesus. You could see plainly who he was. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says because of the whip of the lictor, because of the boom, they would have a bone in the end of that whip and draw flesh out every time it would hit. 39 licks. Drew his eye out. Everything. You couldn't tell he was a man on that cross. Now, this is the same one that bore your sins and mine. Then they took him down, and a man named Joseph of Arimathea begged Pilate for his body and took him and put it in his own tomb. Jesus' spirit went down to hell and paid your price. And then in three days, the father said, get him up. And the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you. Jesus, once he was raised up, watch this, went back in the tomb and got that body, slipped it on. And the spirit of him that was raising up Jesus from the dead called resurrection life permeated that body and healed everything that was wrong with it. You better hear what I'm saying. That's what the devil fights in Christianity. He fights the bodily resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. They went in that tomb looking for that body and it wasn't there. Why? Because Jesus had it on. But now he shows up with people walking down the street asking them what's going on. And they say, haven't you heard that our Lord saved Jesus Christ so forth and so on? They didn't recognize him. Watch this. He wasn't emaciated anymore. He wasn't whipped anymore. He wasn't bruised anymore. Why? Because the spirit, the anointing, heals all of that. Are y'all with me? It heals the anointing in you supposed to heal you. That anointing, why? Because God has work for you to do and he didn't want you to do it and you can't walk. Amen. He didn't want you to do it and you can't see you sick. He didn't want you to do it. He wants to heal everything and restore everything that gets broken. 
He wants to replenish your body every time something breaks down, kidney breaks down, liver breaks down, whatever the heart is. I'm saying that there's a power that is able to pull it back just like God created it in the beginning. Now say amen to that. Now say this with me, the spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in me. And he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also replenish my mortal body by his spirit that dwelleth in me. Now by his stripes, I'm healed and receive it in the name of Jesus. Now give God praise, that's all I got. Subscribe to the Friendship Club channel and hit the bell icon to never miss an update. Like, comment, and share. Thank you for watching. Visit us at thefriendshipclub.in.